to the second part of the Active Directory Connector video series. This video focuses on the OpenIDM server setup, where the first video focused on the connector server install. On the OpenIDM server side, there are a few more things left to tie all of our previous work together. Before I move on into the additional work, however, I want to see first what state my server is currently in with respect to the connectors. To do this, I will use the built-in REST API to query the connectors and their status. Using Postman, my REST URL is typed in and the required headers are already populated. Hitting send gives me the current state of all of the available connectors. At this time, the response shows that I have only one connector available, which is for Google. With no Active Directory connector available, I will now move into the configuration files. Now, when you're getting started with connectors, Fordra provides a great resource, which is their samples directory. In the samples directory, they provide us with basic configuration files that can easily be updated to meet our needs. I've actually used those same files to get started here. First, we'll take a look at the files required to set up the connector. On the left is the connector info provider file. This is what tells OpenIDM how to connect to the connector server. The file on the right side of my screen is the provisioner file for Active Directory. This is one of two options available when connecting to an Active Directory instance. The other option, of course, is to use the generic LDAP provisioner file. Let's examine these files a little closer now. On the left, the info provider file is much simpler and looks for just a few basic pieces of data, starting with name. Name is a friendly reference to this remote object that can help determine one object versus the other in the instance that you have multiple remote connector server objects. Next is host. This is the IP address of the remote server to which we want to connect. Then we have port. But this is an optional attribute and it specifies the remote port of our connector server. By default, the port number is set to 8759. Below that is use SSL. This is an optional attribute which allows us to specify whether or not to connect to the connector server over SSL. In my instance, I'm assuming that everything is within a secured network and I'm going to leave this as false. Next is the timeout option. This specifies the timeout in milliseconds to use for the connection. We set this to zero by default, which means there is none. Following this is key. The key is the secret key or password that we provided using the command line utility in the very first video. Now let's switch over to the provisioner file. Uh, this particular file has far too many options to cover all of them in this one video. So I'll focus in on an important subset which are used in setting up a very basic connection uh, for searching only at this point. For the most part, this file was taken straight out of the samples directory using all of the default values, but has a few crucial changes made which are specific to this new connection. All of those changes have been made within the configuration properties section. So let's zoom in on this and start looking at some of these attributes. Uh, let's start with directory admin name and directory admin password. These two go hand in hand. The admin account should have directory admin permissions to manage your users for this domain. The format can either be as an LDAP bind DN or as a Windows domain name double backslash SAM account name. Next, let's see the object class, which is a object class for the objects which you are looking to retrieve from the directory. And finally, let's take a look at the container object. Uh, this is the base DN for performing all of the operations. In our case, this is where all of our user searches will begin. With all of the config files ready, now let's move into enabling the connector in OpenIDM. Uh, to save time, I have already set up all of my files and I have them ready to be copied over from a temp directory. Uh, copying these files over into the conf directory of the project will enable the connector as I have configured it. Let's give the server a moment to recognize the change and then query the REST API to ensure that our new connector is available.
Using Postman again, I will rerun the same query as I ran before, but this time I will see that the AD connector we just configured is recognized and it is ready to run. The last step that I want to take now to make sure that this connector is complete is to try and retrieve accounts directly from Active Directory using this connector. To do this, I will use one more REST query. Uh, this will be run against the Active Directory connector uh, with the parameter of query all IDs. Uh, this is a built-in feature of OpenIDM, which will make use of the connector and pull back all available IDs from the connected system. And now with the results of that REST API call showing us user IDs from Active Directory, we can mark this connector as complete. Thank you very much for watching my two-part video series on configuring Active Directory connectors in OpenIDM.